Hey GED students, Holly posted a picture of the advanced level practice from the evaluating expressions level of the crash course up in our GED group, free GED prep from Light and Salt Learning. So usually I always say to you guys, don't worry about the advanced practice, just move on. Advanced level practices are a mixture of the hardest things you might see on the GED and college prep stuff. Some of the stuff you might see on advanced aren't even on the GED. So just, you know, do a lower level and move on. But I decided to do this one for Holly because it's actually a lot easier than it looks. It's not that hard and it does come up on the GED. Sometimes they'll use this notation that throws students, but they don't realize that this is really the same exact skill that we're doing in the beginning and experience level practice. It's just the symbols that look, look a little intimidating. So let's take some time here to understand the symbols and the language in this problem. First, let's just read it through. The function below gives the cost of producing one tricycle, C of N. You read that as C of N, not C times N, based on the total number of items produced, N. Use the function to determine the cost per tricycle when producing 200 tricycles. And then I see this thing, this function. And you might be saying, Kate, what makes it a function? Um, there's a whole formal definition for function, but I don't want to get into that now. Can we just say it's an equation? Okay. This function is an equation. And just like any equation, um, we can use it if we know one of the letters to find the other letter. So in this case, you might say, well, what are the letters here? One of them is C or also called C of N. You might say, Kate, that's two letters. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in a second. And the other one is N. So why do I call this just one letter or one variable, as we call it in math? Well, C of N does not mean C times N like a lot of students think it does. When we use parentheses here, um, I'm not saying to multiply together C and N. If I wanted to multiply together two variables, two letters, I would just write them close to each other, shoved up next to each other like that. When I write it like this, what I'm saying is that C, the cost in this case, so cost is our C of N, C, the cost, depends on N, the number of tricycles we make. See how this said N was the total number of items produced? So C, the cost, is going to change based on N. When N changes, C changes. That's what that notation means. And if it's freaking you out, you can just replace the whole thing with just the C. It's kind of like using C's full name, first and last, or just his first name. I could just call him cost, or I could call him cost as a function of N. So if it's freaking you out, just replace that with C, and maybe you won't be so scared of this example. Now it looks more like something we're used to when we go to evaluate equations. And now it's easier to plug my numbers in. Because take a look. It says use the function to determine the cost per tricycle. We're determining C. They're asking us what is C? When producing 200 tricycles. Well, what are tricycles? Tricycles are the items I'm producing. And look what it says. The total number of items produced is represented by the letter N here. So what am I doing? I'm giving you N. So I'm just saying find what C is when I turn N into 200. Hey, that's as easy as the beginning level problems. This problem wasn't nearly as nasty as it looked. Let's turn N into 200 and see what C ends up being. So let's do it. Let's do our substitution step first. So I won't change C or the equals or the thousand or the operation, of course, but I am going to change that N into 200. Now watch, I put that in in parentheses. And yes, when I have two numbers shoved together with the only thing between them being parentheses, I am saying to multiply. So that's 16 times 200 and keep my fraction bar. And there's an N on the bottom as well. Change every N you see into that value, 200. And now it might be a little ugly. It might have a fraction that scares you, but this is just an expression to simplify. Now you guys, if you have your TI-30 calculator, as long as you're in um, math print mode, you can type this entire thing in just the way you see it and get the answer, but I actually don't have my calculator right on me, so I'm gonna simplify by hand. So do remember that 
When simplifying by hand, you need to follow the order of operations and the top and bottoms of fractions are groups. They're groups. And we always start by simplifying the groups. So I'm just gonna examine the top of this fraction first. There's two things going on. There's addition and there's this multiplication. So according to the order of operations, I have to do multiplication before addition. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. 16 times 200, let's see, I'd get 32 from 16 times two, pop on a couple of zeros on the backside. Again, you can use your calculator. I haven't used the plus, I haven't used the thousand, I haven't used the fraction bar, I haven't used the 200. So I've simplified a little bit. I still have to keep going. There's more to do on top of the fraction before I deal with the fraction bar. So 1,000 plus 3,200 will give me 4,200 divided by 200. Remember, that's what a fraction bar means. Ooh, and I can use my little canceling trick. Again, you can also use your calculator. And I get the answer 21. 4,200 divided by 200 is 21. And what did we say this C represented? Well, we said that the C was the cost of producing one tricycle. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that the cost of producing one triangle is $21. That's how much this company uh, will have to pay in order to make to produce a tricycle. All right, so $21 to produce each one if I produce 200 of them. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.